qualifiers. It could just be an off day for him or an off couple days uh, versus someone like Raynad, we also know is streaky too, right? He sometimes has good runs, whether it's DreamHack or this BlizzCon qualifier or just the few other tournaments sprinkled in between where it just couldn't seem like you win more than one series at a time. So, uh, and, and that's just kind of harsh though. You know, a lot of players, they haven't really been able to put down a big amount of consistent results. And that's why it's so impressive to see players like RDU constantly get to the finals and even win a lot of these tournaments. Um, and I think today will be a really cool proving ground for uh, some of these players too, because more than just Raynad and Nimsh, um, and even Strife Growth to a certain extent. Kit Kats is like one of these players that people have been looking at for a while to start backing up his name with results. And the the reality is, one, he hasn't had many platforms to do it. And the second is, even when he has, um, it hasn't been that great yet. It's been kind of mediocre, to say the least. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to be unbiased here, Monk, because you said I'm from Temple Storm. So I hope my honesty doesn't come off as off-putting here. No, I think it's a very fair assessment of Kit Kats, actually. And... From what we see, we've actually started the game, and it seems like both players have fire war axes equipped. Um, Kit Kats has the the actual fire war axe, whereas Raynad has the the dagger plus a poison. So both three one weapons right now, and it's kind of looking like pretty slow starts at this point. Um, both players have the clear, uh, board cleared just because their weapons are so great, and Kit Kats is actually uh, he's going slightly on the offensive with a, an attack to the face. How do you think the game's going so far? Raynad already has an auctioneer in his hand, actually. Yeah, I mean, when the when you're going up against the warrior, the auctioneer is pretty much the, the card you're looking for just to keep the that going. And I'm kind of surprised that Kit Kat's let off with warrior because um, you don't really. I don't know. It's interesting, just because I guess it makes sense. Granted that Kit Kat thinks warrior can beat anything, but I know a lot of players sometimes don't feel that confident leading off with warrior because uh, they don't want to get put into a, another bad matchup like Druid, which is really common to start, or Shaman. But I, I'm not sure if these guys were able to list each other's classes beforehand. Um, the, the format, actually, I think is, um, even though both players bring uh, th bring three decks, it's actually going to be a best of three. So out of the three decks that you bring, you only get to play two, uh, you only get to play two of those oh, that's decks. Right. That's right. So I think it, in this format, it makes sense to play Warrior because um, Kit Kats is so confident with Warrior that because he thinks he can beat anything, he'll just lead it off against whatever Raynad can bring. And then if he happens to lose this first game or if he happens to uh, even win and then he has to he loses the next game, he has a counter pick. Um, so he's using this this uh, this warrior to start off to kind of get him a lead or perhaps and, and he basically he always wants to play warrior. He doesn't want to be put in a position where, uh, he has to pick a deck which is not where because this is the deck he is comfortable with, most comfortable with after all. All right, well, um, Raynad has been playing Miracle for a while and he's brought it to several tournaments. Um, even his BlizzCon qualifier, he showed that he was also playing a little bit of Miracle too, sprinkled in between some of his other stuff like Handlock. Um, now, it seems like Kit Kats is going to use this death rattle effect to try and pop the Auctioneer, which is kind of a cool thing, but. At the same time, uh, there has been a lot of cards that can be drawn again because Raynad has picked up his second Auctioneer. And sometimes the Warrior is just powerless to do anything, especially if the Conceal goes down and you have no way to remove it with, without Brawl. And even then, that's just a 50-50 sometimes. Yeah, I was actually talking to another Tempo Storm member by the name of Hyped, and he was saying that uh, actually Warrior can be kind of a Miracle Row counter, but he had an asterisk uh, at the top of that where he said, um, you kind of need to time your load that very well. Unfortunately, Kit Kats has not drawn his Lothab, and he doesn't have many cards that can take initiative of the board. Um, he has a few weapons, uh, and he has a Sylvanas, but nothing that can really deal with the Auctioneer that well in, on Kit Kats' next turn. Mm. Well, there's a lot of chain drawing preparation to Fan of Knives allows him to pick up two. Oh my goodness, another preparation. And he also had coin, by the way, the previous turn, so a lot of free cards and cycling. And this is one of the things that people were saying, yeah, sure, Leroy might get nerfed. Cool. But there's still a lot of possibilities for draw potential. And the reality is you can win without Leroy um, a lot of the time, especially if you tool your deck to be that way. So this could be foreshadowing of just pretty much what you've come to expect, where nothing really changes much. Raynad even picks up Conceal. Yeah, that's definitely going to be played right th this turn. And we definitely see it right now. 
Um, and a good point that you mentioned, actually there are decks right now, Miracle Rogue decks, that do not actually run the Leroy or the uh, the Shadow Step combo. Um, Forsen actually streamed it a bunch of it, and he actually used it in his uh, tournament run through the Phase 1 qualifiers for EU. Unfortunately, it didn't go that well for him, but another player by the name of Max actually used the same exact deck taken from Forsen, and with that deck, he qualified for Phase 2. Um, I believe he, he told me that he went something around 17-4 with that deck, which is a really incredible record. So I think that definitely proves that even without Leroy, Miracle will still be a contender in the future. You know, do you think people will be less mad at it then? Because right now, Kit Kats is going through the process of, oh my god, how do I deal with this? I don't have Brawl. I'm just, I'm, he's just going to draw more cards. He's just going to burst me. But even if that's the case, do you feel like it's... Um, it's more of a fair fight. Like, sure, maybe Miracle gets down a peg or two, but is it that much more significant, or do you feel like it's still going to be just as potent, just maybe a little bit weaker? You know, I think the two reasons people get so mad at Miracle Rogue is, first, they see this Gadgetan Auctioneer, and then this this gadget, it chains, like, five or six cards in a row, and the other, your opponent's thinking, oh, that's, that's not fair at all. And the second part is when the Leroy comes down, and it deals, like, 30 damage to you in one turn, which... Uh, I believe you saw in a tournament recently in one of your many casts. And again, the, your opponent's going to think, oh, that's not fair at all either. So one of those two things is going to go away, but you're still going to have half of the, the kind of frustration there. Yeah, frustration indeed, because more free spells, backstab comes down. There is a lot of potential for some good life gain with the armor smith, but you know, Reyna doesn't have initiative whatsoever. It's very easy for the Miracle Rogue just to kind of slip in damage with the Gadget Sand, and this is all counting towards the fact that Reynad already has Leroy in hand and double Shadow Step. Now he has the opportunity to set up a, a two-turn lethal, I believe, if he just kind of plans it out, make sure that his damage is accounted for, and just get out as much as he can, so that way the next turn he can go for this 18 damage combo plus what he has. Yeah, I think we've already kind of hit the point where it's kind of like the point of no return. Even though Kit Kats will be able to take this Auctioneer um, out on the next turn with his Execute, the card advantage is just, is just too huge for Reyna at this point. Kit Kats has not really been drawing the, uh, some, a lot of his cycle cards, which include Acolyte of Pain or Slam. So his hand size is looking uh, fairly anemic right now. Um, even though he can deal with this, um, with this Auctioneer, it's going to be very difficult to take care of the Sludge Belcher. Um, and that Sludge Belcher is gonna, just going to keep racking in damage turn after turn until eventually Raynad will just be able to use a Leroy combo in order to finish Kit Kats off once and for all. Um, Kit Kats, I, I really wish we could see his face right now. I mean, we can see, par see par part of it, but I kind of want to see his reactions. He must be in like severe pain right now. Yeah, don't be fooled. It's not a frozen cam or you know, Kit Kat's myth of monster staring ability. It's the fact that we couldn't get his webcam up today, so... We're just using a picture, <clears throat> but I would assume it would probably show a little bit of signs of distress considering that he doesn't have the best options. Um, in fact, Sylvanas comes back in his hand off of, a, off of a sap, but she has no application. And then Gromash doesn't really affect anything other than killing the Sludge Belcher. So, you know, even then you're taking some damage back. Kikaz is in a really tough spot here. Yeah, uh, tough, tough spot indeed. Uh, it's compounded by the fact that Raynet already has his second sap in his hand. So no matter what minion Kit Kats decides to put on the board, it'll just go back to, to Kit Kats' hand once again. Um, Kit Kats plays a six mana Sylvanas, and, and in turn, Raynet will play a two mana sap. So that's effectively a, a four mana tempo swing, uh, swing in Raynet's favor. And um, that will essentially equate to even more damage onto Kit Kats' face. Well, he's got at least 24 damage right now. His opponent's at 29. And that's going to still be a little bit short, but the good news is he has other ways to stack the board. He's got Van Cleef, SI7. Right now, it looks like he wants to draw more cards, but I feel like there's no more real cards to be drawn without overloading your hand because he was thinking about shoving to the face. I think uh, just putting some of these minions out is your strongest play. Hmm. Yeah, you just want to develop the board. Uh, Kit Kat obviously is very low on answers right now. He's been using his uh, Shield Slam, and it's, I think it's, oh, Sh Spellbreaker, a pretty good draw. He'll be able to silence the Edwin. But I kind of wanted to, to note that 
Um, KitKat's actually saved his his execute for the last turn. So it seems like he values execute a bit more than he values the shield slam. And I, and I think that's because um, he realized he was at two armor the last turn and he could gain two more armor for a six damage shield slam, whereas execute might be a little easier to activate in the future. Yeah, he has death spite in hand compared to the fact that most likely he's going to have his armor shredded by Miracle Rogue repeatedly. So the most damage that can do is two, while this execute could scale infinitely, assuming this Van Cleef would go up really high. That said, Gitcat's still in a tough position because if you silence Van Cleef, you're still only gaining four health, essentially, when it attacks. And you've got bigger problems on your hands. Just the fact that there's the Sludge Belcher just in the way. An interesting inclusion into this Miracle Rogue. It seems like Sludge Belcher could fit anywhere nowadays. Yeah, um, I actually did an interview with Raynat today, um, which will be going up soon on Liquid Hearth, and he was saying that uh, Sludge Belcher is so good um, that I just want to put it in every single deck. And we've seen it kind of uh, uh, more and more uh, being included. Actually, he sciences the Sludge Belcher, and he goes for face. Wow. Um, KitKats realizes that he has potential lethal on board if Raynat doesn't put up a taunt or he, um, or he can't kill him the next turn. And with the Grom plus the 4 damage from the, um, from the Death Spite, he can, but unfortunately... Uh, Vaynat does have the Leroy, and he can finish him off. Yeah, he's got him covered way over. He's got double shadow step and eviscerate, um, <laughs> and even some other ways to squeeze in there with blade flurry. So it didn't. It didn't seem like Kit Kat's was preferential in the groups will be higher. So that means that if you kind of tie in matches with another player in your group, then you'll go ahead if you have won one more game. Now we see Kit Kat's uh, pick a counter, which is, um, I believe, a tempo priest based on the fact that there's a loot hoarder. Uh, in Kit Kat's deck. What do you kind of think about this matchup, Priest, Tempo Priest specifically, versus Miracle Rogue? Oh, I, I hate it. I played a lot of Priest in the past week and a half, Monk, and let me tell you, one of its worst matchups feels like Miracle Rogue because other than the Auchanized Circle combo, you are powerless a lot of times since cards like Holy Fire have been eliminated for stronger minion board control plays. So... It's good that Kit Kats has it, but um, even so, you know, there might be a case where Kit Kats might be baited to play something because a lot of times more so than answering the auctioneer because that doesn't always come from the Miracle Rogue. You need something on board. So if Kit Kats has no other play, sometimes you can't afford to just pass because the board development means everything. And Miracle Rogue is one of the exceptional decks at taking that away from Priest. Yeah, uh, Kit Kats, unfortunately, he doesn't have a really strong opening uh, turn one. That's very important with Tempo Priest because it kind of wants to build up um, mm -hmm. either an Undertaker or a Zombie Chow early on, and they just want to curve out really attacking damage on the board. And well, a backstab instead of a dagger from uh, Raynad. Could we be seeing a big Edwin this turn? Oh, actually, it's a 4 4 Edwin. Right. It, it's, an, it's big enough to the point where it harasses whatever comes out, and it's still um, very difficult for Priest to deal with because of 4 attack. Now this injured blade circle, uh, this injured circle play is as strong as minion, uh, but you're really hoping your opponent doesn't have sap or an easy way to sacrificing his minion in. Yeah, Raynad got the the four four dream van cleave against priest, but it's probably the best situation that Kit Kats could have hoped for because he not only does he have two circle of healings, he has two creatures to combo the circles with. Um, in addition to the fact that Raynad doesn't have a sap in his hand, um, even if this 4-7 four, four were sapped to the field, then Kit Kats could just as well easily respond with a circle plus Akanai in the next turn. And that's got to hurt Raynad. He, he clears the 4-7, but at the cost of his minion on the board uh, and at the cost of 4 damage to his face, plus a poison dagger charge. Right. It's... It definitely hurts, but it can easily pick up if Raynad picks up a preparation or conceal over the next couple of draws because he does have the auctioneer in hand. He's got two auctioneers in hand as well. So that allows him to kind of use the first one and have that ability to back up in case Priest has the best answer for it, which sitting in Kit hands, he does. Yeah. Uh, wow. A Karen goes in the field and again... Uh, Kit Kats knows that Raynad probably does not have a sap in his hand by the fact that he didn't sap the 4-7 the that was on the board previously. 
Uh, fortunately, Raynan has a decent play in Auctioneer. Um, or he could choose to use the Thanos. He was kind of hovering over that Thanos a bit, but that doesn't really do much to affect the board state. And I feel like the, the Auctioneer, since you have two, you can kind of afford to give that up, but it is the Thanos that goes on the board. And he does he choose to shiv the Thanos? Wow. Ah, deny the Cabal Shadow Priest. This is a very nice foresight because look what it's in Kit Kat's hands. He does have that Cabal Shadow Priest. So he immediately goes for the double draw in order to try and uh, get as much card draw as possible in preparation. And you know what? It's taking advantage of the fact that this form of Miracle is a little bit lighter on the draws. He does have double Belcher, which makes me believe that he doesn't have any Azure Drake in his deck because you would still have to have cards like um, the Gadget Sand Auctioneer and most likely Lotheb. And anything else is just jumbling your deck far too much on the five mana slot. Mm -hmm. Now, Kit Kats, he, again, he doesn't have... He has the Karen on board, which is very important. But he has to be thinking, what could make my opponent do that kind of play? And also, he's, uh, he's more tempted to use the Cabal Shadow Priest right now because typically in Miracle Rogue, there's only two targets, either the uh, Thalnos, which, which Raynan has already denied, or a possible 2-4 uh, No Mission Venter, which we don't even know, or Kit Kats doesn't even know if that's in Raynan's deck. So it's even a chance that this uh, Cabal could be used something other than um, a 4-5. Hmm. Well, Raynan with a pair of pretty poor draws, honestly. The Shadow Steps don't help him in the slightest at the moment. And he wanted more spells to go with the Gadgetan Auctioneer, but he did use some of his best draw mechanics with the, the, um, the Gadgetan Auctioneer. Shiv and Thad of Knives, um, along with some other cards like Backstab would have been easy to cycle through. So he's in a slightly awkward spot, even though it looked nice that he had both Auctioneers, and he might just toss out um, one of these five-cost minions and just kind of leave it out there, whether it's to draw the Auctioneer or the Sludge Belt to defend for himself. Yeah, that uh, Thalnos into Shiv play was basically Raynad thinking, if... Both the cards that I used on my previous turn, they both, uh, they're both they both cantrips, and they both draw another card. So hopefully I can get two more spells from that, plus a third spell that I'll draw on the turn that Raynad is on right now. Unfortunately, Raynad got two Shadow Steps. Mm. Um, they're spells, but not really the spells you want. Wow, interesting creative play here from Raynad. He's trying to anticipate the Sludge Belch, the first body being taken out of some kind. And by doing so, there's only going to be a 1-2 slime to potentially challenge this 4-1 body from Karen that's been weakened. Uh, you know, it could also backfire depending on what Priest has, which is uh, this ability to double heal his creatures. Yeah, it was definitely a very creative play from Raynad. He's thinking, um, in this matchup, my health really doesn't matter that much. Either the Priest will snowball on his board um, and I'll lose eventually, or I'll just draw too much and Priest can't deal with it. And in either circumstance, the um, the Rogue's health isn't really that important. Um, Raynad has eight mana right now. He decides, I have to go for the Deadly Poison. And he draws a preparation. That was a pretty huge mm. draw. But he got nothing off of it. This preparation into nothing. And you have a second Auctioneer, so it feels like Shadow Stepping your Auctioneer is a, is solely just to cycle and lose six damage ability to burst against the priest deck. You're also staring at a board that will most likely trade into it and not lose anything on the, because of the priest hero power. So Raynad's in a tough spot. It could pick up a lot. It's, all he has to do is draw Leroy, but as of now, he only has his Farseer and Sludge Belchers, and those are dead ends. Yeah, as Kit Kats right now... Um, oh, I guess Raynad passed. As Kit Kats right now, you have to be thinking... What could possibly be in uh, Raynad's hand right now for him not to draw like five or six cards from this auctioneer? And um, the cards that come to mind are cards like Re Leroy, Shadow Step, and Shadow Step. So I think um, Kit Kat's at this stage of the game, he should be playing a bit more defensively, trying to keep his life uh, total up a bit. Um, and oh, he, he chooses to heal the Karen, actually. I, I guess he at 25 HP, you're not really thinking of something like. Um, the Leroy combo plus a preparation plus an eviscerate, especially because Raynad already had a gadget last turn and he did not use preparation on that turn. Oh yes, definitely. And you know, he you, you don't prep into pass. That just doesn't exist when the gadget stands on the board. You know your opponent hit minions and or situational cards that he doesn't feel like using. Now Raynad still 
Oh, he has second preparation with his gadget sand, and he's got nine mana. So there is room for him to kind of get out here, but just the preparation alone doesn't guarantee anything here, Monk. Yeah, but I feel like if you kind of make a, a more defensive play, like if you play just the sludge, uh, the, the sludge belcher into the Earthen Ring Farseer, um, I think you're going to get snowballed to death. Um, Raynad does go for that line of play. He's really hoping for a second spell, and he's hoping that um, this won't be too bad for him. Um, after all, the Sludge Belcher is a 5 health minion creature. It's just, it's incredibly difficult to deal with with all the 4 attack creatures on Kit-Kat's board right now. So um, it'll be... I, I, maybe Raynad will be thinking, oh, I can... Uh, I can possibly maybe only take four health of damage at best this next turn. Maybe the board won't get too stacked. And that's pretty optimistic considering your opponent could have stuff like Shadow Madness and completely take over your Sludge Belcher and its Death Rattle effect, which you've been seeing as a common include as many Priest players, including you know Brian Kibler and a lot of people who've taken Expiration like that a lot. Um, have really included in part of their uh, arsenal here. Now, Kit Kat's picked up his own Sludge Belcher, one of the best defenses against Leroy, and it seems like he can just push a little bit. His opponent isn't sitting at the highest life total, and it's like you said, the board is starting to snowball here. Yeah, Kit Kat's will be able to get really nice value out of the Circle of Healing. He'll be healing, um, he'll be healing four of his creatures for a total of, I believe, four plus four plus four, 13 uh, points of damage. Plus 13 health for a zero mana card. Not bad at all, I would say. That oh, sounds pretty good. It's conceal. You need a little bit more, though, because look at what's on the board. You might need to draw sap on something, most likely the cairn, because you're looking at uh, 17 damage on the board at the moment, and just like a simple Holy Nova or Aconite Hero Power could kill you. Uh, Raynad introduced with... Um, a Phantom dies off his preparation, so that gives him the ability to draw two more, but he's trying to plan out his mana. I feel like Phantom Knives, though, is the better choice by far. Just want to get the two cards to see what you can get. You could kind of see uh, Raynad's um, eyebrows kind of flare up once he drew the conceal, because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, it's like, oh, I finally drew the conceal, nice, but... At the same time, oh, now I finally get to conceal after this many turns? Really? Is this what you're giving me right now? <laughs> Better late than never, honestly. Yeah. Um, Reyna decides to use the fan because it was, after all, a three mana card, and it allows him to use two mana, car two, two mana cards more. Um, so he'll actually be able to um, clear some of the board right now. Fairly impressive. Yeah, and leave his opponent with... Just two or four attack minions, unless he draws something else to help him clear once more. But with zero mana left, job by the auctioneer has been done, and that was the exact thing that Kit Kat did not want to see. And interestingly enough, because Kit Kat gave up his circle of healing, he did manage to secure his board. Otherwise, everything would have died to just the Phantom Knives alone. But at the same time, because he drew Zombie Chow, that was the extra seven damage needed to end the game. Yeah. Um... Raynad actually knows that his auctioneer will be pretty safe right now, unless uh, Kit Kats has something like Sylvanas plus Death. Um, we've already seen Kit Kats use two of his circles, and um, and Kit Kats might even be regretting using his second circle last turn, even though he got 13 points worth of damage from it. Is Kit Kats just going to heal and possibly pass right now? It seems awfully strange. Wow, I, I don't know. I feel like the board presence matters that much more. Doesn't Akanai give it like another tempting ability for your opponent to play removal? Yeah, and not only that, um, Yasura might have been a decent card as well. Perhaps a Yasura Awakens might be exactly what you need to, to kill Raynad next turn. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I guess he values, the, uh, uh, he values the healing a lot, and he values the the uh, board presence of the 3-5 rather than a 4-12. We haven't seen many saps from Raynad, and actually Raynad just drew his first sap, so I, I believe that was a pretty good, good call from Kit Kats. Wow. Raynad's going for a, a viscerate to the face, and if he draws Leroy, then I believe just with the 8 mana alone, that allows him to give lethal, because that's 18 plus the, the 4 plus 22. So he's not playing for the removal game, he's playing for the throw based off how many cards are left. And he doesn't get Leroy. 
He gets the Lothab instead. Mm -hmm. Now that you haven't drawn Leroy with that backstab, Raynad's plan has to change. There's a, just a yep. lot of damage on the board right now. Um, there is 11 exactly, actually, plus the two hero power from the the um, from the priest with the Akanai. So Raynad saps the the bane, and I believe he can actually can he clear the rest of the field? Yeah, just attack. You can just use your auction to attack and clear. The Akanai is a higher priority for sure. Yeah, that's fair. Do you want the extra card with Shiv? Or do you want to put out an SI7 agent? I mean, I think the SI7 agent kind of compensates for the lack of damage with the Eviscerate. So, yeah, I think Art, Art, uh, Art's going to call him Art of He would have been so offended. Right now, he's going to be in a really good position if he draws Leroy. And he still has another outer with Shiv, so that way he can go for the full combo. Oh, wow, that's pretty desperate. Healing your opponent's auctioneer. Ugh. Uh oh. Kikats uh oh, he's gonna well play it, not even gonna play this out because he knows Raynad just has too much damage and Kit Cats can't. <sighs> so close, yet can't so deal far, with Monk. Rogue got to 